Hey guys, so in this video I am responding to a viewer request where basically I was asked to do a review of a roadmap for different positions within systems development and virtually give my take on this, this roadmap and explain a little bit about my thinking around these concepts. So let's dive into it. This roadmap is for DevOps. Now, I will start off by saying that I, when I was looking very briefly through this roadmap here, I think that it is, it is very, very odd to segment something like DevOps into its own section. I think that this is, you see the thing is with, with DevOps, like the idea, or if you look at the word DevOps, development operations, it's very important to know that going into operations solely is not usually the way that you do these types of things. If you wanted to, these tools that we're going to walk through, these are the things that you learn when you have already mastered backend development and you have at least a little bit of experience doing front-end development or something like that. But it also the, the, these tools, don't start looking into these tools unless you already know a server-side language and you know how to actually program and stuff like that because this stuff here, this is, this is meta stuff. This is stuff that you learn when you already know how to build applications because this, all of these tools are here to help you run your system. That's basically it. The, the, that's what these operations uh, tools are for. So let's walk through it. First and foremost, we have a node here for operating system, Unix and Linux. I would say that this is very useful. I would say that I personally, I work on a MacBook and I spend almost all my time in the terminal. And I do that because the terminal on a Mac is virtually almost identical to any of the Linux distributions. And when you're most of, you should know that almost all of the environments and the different cloud host, hosting services and so forth are have standardized on a li Linux flavored terminal. So learning the o Linux operating system, I think is very valuable. If you're all already use a ter the terminal on a Mac, you can just stay there and it's going to be pretty much the same deal but if you're on a windows machine you should start really think about switching over to some, to a linux bo a linux computer or a mac macbook or something like that it's not that you can't do things in windows it's just that the shell and a lot of the tools for operations are in general optimized like microsoft if you run things in their world absolutely you're going to feel right at home but if you as soon as you switch over to like somebody else or something like that linux is usually the way that things are like that's the thing that most of the hosting providers have structured their applications around so let's look at cloud let's look at cloud so here we have cloud foundry rackspace amazon heroku azure google cloud platform and digital ocean these are just a fraction of all there are there are tons more for cloud hosting providers and i would say as a beginner if on this list here i would say start with heroku something like that and really really wait with azure google cloud platform and amazon these those three are the types of cloud cloud housing solutions you use when you want to build a real real business where you we're talking about you either work for a big company or you are moving your own application into a, a production level like you're going to start building a real company type of deal and I agree with this roadmap that Amazon is probably the best bet to start off with Amazon is uh, off Amazon Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Amazon is probably the best bet. And I'm not saying that Amazon is better than Azure or Google Cloud Platform. I'm just saying that Amazon is probably the most established one. So let's say that you wanted to learn, what if you, since you can't learn all of them, it's probably a good bet to start with Amazon because it's the one that the most amount of really large companies use. And Google Cloud Platform is like probably arguably one of the more trendy ones. Azure is, as far as I know, is still the cheapest one in general. But Amazon is, yeah, it's the one that is 
probably the most established and is going to be the most valuable for you to know at least on your CV but if you haven't gotten to that point yet just start with Heroku or something like that because it's easier to get something up and running and this requires a lot of time to get good at. Let's look at automation so here we have automation this is highly highly subject subjective Terraform is it's a pretty good tool salt stack chef ansible and puppet okay so automation this kind of brings a philosophical question because automate it depends on the type of infrastructure that you have at your company so the tools tools such as a salt stack chef ansible and puppet these tools all do the same thing or virtually they provide the same type of service and what's a little bit difficult about this is that well why would you learn all of these uh, any of these things until you have a actual use case for it i would say that in general you use tools such as chef if you have an architecture that is not container based basically if you're not using something like let's take my company for example i use google cloud platform with docker and kubernetes so there's no reason for me to use these tools because i have a solution that does the same sort of thing but when i was working at ticketmaster chef was the way to go because we weren't they weren't running their system in docker containers they were running it on virtual machines so that, that, that that's why i think that you should skip all of this as a beginner because this is very advanced stuff like this is this is where if you know this stuff also that you're not watching or rather if you are at the le skill level that you actually need to consider stuff like this i'm pretty sure you wouldn't be watching this video to begin with because this is really really advanced stuff this is the type of stuff that i had to deal with at like terraform and chef and so forth this is the stuff that as i said ticketmaster and companies like multi-billion dollar industries use and consider so I would ignore this as a beginner. And let's let's look at CICD. So Jenkins is probably the oldest and most established of these. I've used it quite a few times. And I see that there's another one that isn't here, which is the current one that I use, which is called GitLab. Personally, I would say as a beginner, I would not spend too much time with the learning like this t sort of stuff it's never on any job requirements at all like i my i have never ever had anybody at any company have any of these tools as a hard requirement for me to know in order to be able to do my job effectively but if i were to s pick anything from this list i would pick jenkins it's probably in the more established companies the most common one and I f otherwise I would look at something like GitLab because GitLab is probably uh, Jenkins is is pretty cool but I like GitLab more and they are getting some really cool traction I've used GitLab on almost well my two latest jobs we used GitLab and Jenkins as in in some fashion as well so that's that's my take on matters but you know this is the sort of stuff that you really don't care about this until you work at a fairly large company with at least one uh, like a team of developers you're going it, this only becomes really useful to know about when you actually start doing professional work so if you are a complete beginner just learning some tools this is not a good thing to learn that early in your career learn this when you get to your first job let's take a look at the next thing okay so this is yeah monitoring and alerting i would say that you can skip all of this completely because it's uh, every single company has their own like you i can't tell you which one of these are the best i know that new relic is very very popular it's all also very pricey but i can tell you that none of these tools this is not even by a long shot all the different monitoring and alerting tools that are out there each company has usually their own setup their own solution so don't waste your time learning these learn this stuff if you're co when you come to your company and no one is going to not you know not hire hire you because you don't know all of these all of these things it's not ever even come up as a requirement this is this is the sort of stuff you learn on the job don't even waste your time on it log management and analysis same thing here completely pointless for a beginner to learn this is something that you will learn 
on the job, just ignore it. Cluster management, this is also very subjective. So this kind of depends, like, let's say that you did something as what I do, for example, then Docker Swarm, I, when you're running things in Docker, Docker Swarm and Kubernetes, like, you don't have to know both, it's fairly useful if you know them, but Kubernetes would probably be the best choice if you're running Docker. But the question is, do you actually run Docker? If you're not running Docker, then there's no reason for you to learn Kubernetes or Docker, or Docker Swarm. Ergo, it very, this highly depends on the type of infrastructure you have at your company. I would say that it's almost important, as a beginner, you can kind of skip this as well. I'm pretty, you, you are not going to have a hard requirement of knowing this type of stuff on your first job, I would say. This is, I've never, this is, as I've said before, even if you learn this stuff, you are not most likely going to be trusted to do th this is the sort of stuff a senior developer at a company with a lot of experience is going to set up for you when, and when you get there it's useful for you to know these tools just to have a, an, a like a somewhat of an understanding of what's going on but this is not the sort of stuff that you are going to yourself as a beginner have to set up for a company and if they are forcing you to do that quit that company a company that sets a uh, tasks a junior developer to set up their entire infrastructure is a bad company and they are ha they have problems way beyond what you can provide in terms of solutions let's look at containers so this is a fairly good list i would skip these two immediately and just go for docker docker is the trendiest thing out there in the world of it today if you're going to learn containers then we have web servers and this is a very so you see, let's see, differences and when to use what. I think this is very, very, it's silly, honestly. Like, I don't see any, learning web service, all right? Yeah, I, I assume that as we saw, since I stated earlier, all of these tools, all, all of these tools require you to already know backend development. And if you know backend development, you're, and I assume that you have picked one of the languages that actually you know you have to have a web server you have to serve up content somehow so I don't see why you would have to learn all of these th 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 these are not even all that like okay so yeah Tomcat but what about JBoss what about the uh, there's tons of other flavors of the of the Java web service for example so I think this is very misleading I think that just learning uh, just stating that somebody should learn web service is it's it's not it's not good this is I would completely ignore all of this so because let's say that you started working in PHP then Apache would be on your list you would probably learn that fairly quickly but if you are an OJS developer for the service on the server side then why would you learn Apache it wouldn't make it make any sense it's uh, rather it, it wouldn't be a natural thing for you to learn as a beginner nginx yeah sure nginx is an awesome it's my that's my favorite web server it's an absolutely awesome web server if you're doing a distributed system we use it at my job for example so if you had to, if i have to say tell you to learn one of these i would say nginx is probably the most universal one but this is getting into as i've said before the realm of very complicated professional level stuff and as a beginner i don't think that there's so much value in learning all of these and the differences between them because you're just going to confuse yourself. That's my opinion anyway. And then let's look at love for terminal. So let's look at that. I've, the, the, I, I, I completely agree with this. Learn to use the terminal because trust me, if you want to be able to if work effectively as a programmer, it's very, very useful to learn how to use the terminal. I spend all my time in the term in the terminal. It's actually embarrassingly enough gotten to the point where I can. Well, I'll just admit it. I don't actually know all that much about the Mac, MacBook, like Mac Apple's operating systems. The different. I don't. I don't care about them because I spend almost all my time in the terminal, and it's working out very nicely for me. So let's see here. Compiling apps from source. I think you can skip this completely as a beginner. You, the, the times that you're going to have to compile something from source and learn the different compilers and the make make system. I Learn this if you have to. Don't start by learning this. You're going to find out if you need to learn it. Bash scripts are fairly useful, I would say. I wouldn't get into them unless I had to. 
because for the most part you basically a bash script is just a way for you to automate some thing you want to do in the terminal so I, I would say that learn this stuff when you f get the need to learn something like this it's not something you have to like sit down and study in order to be an effective developer Vim and Nano, I would say that this is, the, you should have a brief look at these because they are very useful. What ha usually happens is that beginners will use a text editor such as Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code or Notepad or something like that to edit files on their own file system. But you can do that when you are using something like SSH to access a remote computer. If you're, let's say that you have your production production environment where your application is running and you need to go in there and change some type of file, well, then it's very easy for you to use Vim and Nano because then you can actually access the file on the remote system and update it and save it without have, having to do a lot of extra proxy hassle stuff. So I think that these two are very good. Commands and tools. Ignore all of this. These are, this are, these are the tools that you learn when you have a problem that you can't solve and then you Google that problem and somebody's going to tell you, yeah, go and learn awk or you said. You learn it when you have a problem that you need, need to solve that you, and that's, that's my two cents on it. Let's look at TCP, okay, OSI model, TCP, common ports. This is fairly useful. I would say, I would go even one further and say that just learning the different protocols for sending information on the internet is very important like HTTP, TCP, UDP and ports numbers such as port 80, port 4, uh, 443 and port 22 for example. The different porting systems, uh, the port system is fairly useful to know I would say. Knowledge about different file systems. I think that yeah that's uh, it's a bit generic but it's useful to know what the difference between the file system on a Mac a Linux box and a, a Windows machine for example is then there's more than that but you don't have to go deep much deeper than that just kind of figure out what the differences between the different platforms are and you'll be good setting up a reverse proxy that is complete I don't know as a beginner don't even b bother with this what would you even use a reverse proxy for it's th this is professional level stuff once again this is the sort of stuff that you will set uh, you will learn when you're you need to actually do this the, no one starts off by setting up a reverse proxy setting up caching ser uh, setting up a caching server all right this is also fairly subjective uh, this could be useful let's say that you use redis or something like that but once again i would say get the problem first and then learn this stuff. Don't sit down and try to pre-study this because it's just going to be a waste of your time. Learn it when you need to learn it. Same thing for setting up a load balancer. Most of these things are actually, if you are working on something like Amazon, you don't have to do this really yourself. Amazon has to, like an interface where you can basically just say, set this stuff up for me and it takes care of it for you. Setting up a firewall. That is uh, also pretty, I would say this is not beginner stuff. This, re In order for you to set up, know how to set up a firewall and actually know all the threats, you will have to be a professional and you will have to know more stuff than this little, like the, the, this is much more complicated than you might think. So no, l don't try to learn this ahead of time, learn this through experience. Here we have the different protocols. I would say that this is fairly useful to know. The most useful I can see here are, for example, HTTPS, SCP, and SSH. These are very, very common. SSL arguably as well, but these are at least the most common ones. It could be useful to just have a look at those. You don't have to go and like make a deep dive. Postmortem analysis when something bad happens. That's also highly subjective, all right? So you are a, you, you are a junior developer. How do you know what? Uh, how can how can you even perform an analysis of when something bad happens? This is one of those experience things, in my opinion. You will learn how to effectively analyze, uh, understand a system as a whole by simply working with more experienced professionals. So don't try and sit. I mean, it's too vague to even give something concrete of this. If you were to Google this, odds are that you won't find anything useful or rather at least not something that's going to make any sense to you 
I, I can walk you through this if you want to, but I wouldn't say that a beginner should sit down and try to pre-study this, learn it from somebody with more experience. And yeah, that is basically my little walkthrough of this review. I hope it was useful to you and have a great day.